So I would love to start, how did the passion for media came, for writing? Because I know writing for you is, is really important and mm -hmm. it's a why. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me, of course, Mirella. I am so honored to be here. I flew here from Denver, Colorado, um, and I'm actually Canadian, so my family is uh, from Toronto, lived in Colorado for the last eight years. Just a little bit about my background. Um, as for how I got into journalism, I've been a journalist, a traditional print journalist in the magazine field for 25 years. I also took a stint there for five or six years and moved into the corporate communications corporate world. So I do have the corporate background as well. But my passion for publishing has always prevailed. And you asked about how I got into that and why I decided to take this, you know, this journey. Well, I, I did my undergraduate degree, actually, funny enough, in political science and international foreign relations. And then I went on to do my master's in journalism after I took a media course in uh, my undergrad that introduced me to storytelling. And I've always loved writing. I've always been um, you know, a journaler. I had so many diaries. I don't know if any of you women had diaries growing up. You know, with the, you know the ones with the lock? Yes. yes. Who knows where those locks are now? I, I don't know. But I still have the actual uh, journals. So I knew from a young age that I really wanted to be a writer. Um, I just didn't know exactly how I was going to implement it into a professional realm yet. I just knew I wanted to write. And I was one of those people I'd rather write than read. And then I sometimes wouldn't even read what I wrote. I just like the act of actually writing. So when I ended up taking this particular media and communications course in my undergraduate um, time at, at university, I realized that I could actually interview people and write about their stories. And that intrigued me. I thought, I'm, I've always been very, very curious. I've always loved travel. And I've always loved people. And I think those three things are what really made me want to become a journalist. And at that time, I didn't know what kind of journalist. There's many, many forms of journalism, of course. There's print, there's newspaper, there's magazine, broadcast, and today, of course, social journalism. And um, at the time, I didn't know. But I did end up uh, majoring in magazine journalism. And that's really where my career started, after graduation. And then I went on to run several magazines. Uh, my first uh, claim to fame, if you will, is something that's very notable in my own portfolio is I was the editor-in-chief of Oxygen Women's Fitness for many, many, many years. So my background actually in journalism started in the health and wellness industry. Originally, I wanted to go into fashion journalism, being a you know, woman, I love fashion, and I love clothes, I wanted to travel the world and go to all these runway shows, but I ended up actually at a fitness magazine. And that's kind of how my whole journalism career started. And from there, I've moved to parenting magazines, I've run lifestyle luxury magazines, real estate magazines, um, home and garden interior design magazines, and even city lifestyle magazines. And today I find myself at Success Magazine, which yeah. is my Woo! most recent Woo! success. Mm -hmm. Did you know that this magazine is a 100 years old yes. magazine? Wow. Yes. Yeah, I hope I don't look it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, wow. so this is a new venture for me. Um, I was recently actually recruited for this and sought out to specifically to take this magazine and basically help it evolve because not only is business and entrepreneurship evolving as you know the pandemics come in and there's all these new streams of business working from home and a lot of younger entrepreneurs as well. So I was brought in specifically, actually, to evolve this magazine to the next level. So that's where I am right wow. now. Definitely. Yeah. Success yeah. magazine, smart choice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. So, um, Kerry, now I would like to uh, kind of shift our conversation a little bit to the answers that this audience is looking for. Sure. And uh, it's all about once you get your purpose, you get your vision, and you know that you are here for a reason, you know that there is something deep inside you that you want the world to know. But somehow, and at the beginning, we, yeah, we don't need to know how to get there. But this question keeps kind of knocking in us. Okay, I, I know what I'm meant to do now, but how do I get this message out there? What would be your answer? Once a woman, have has that entrepreneurial calling and feels that it's here to go out there and put the message 
to the right people, mm -hmm. what is the best way to, to put that message to the media? Thank you. Well, I mean, I'm like you all, right? I'm an entrepreneur at heart as well. Um, I run my own business as well, so I'm a magazine journalist, obviously an editor-in-chief by day. And then at night and 24 hours a day and, you know, <laughs> seven days a week, 365 days a year, I'm actually the owner of Red Lily Media, which is a media company that I run and it's a content creation business. So at the same time, I'm able to put people in our magazine and on, on our website and give them exposure, but then I'm also doing this myself where I'm trying to get my own exposure for my own brand. And to answer your question, so I'm actually doing it for other people, but I'm at the same time still learning and I'm also still trying to share my own story so you asked specifically about how to get into this magazine or any other magazine for that matter and I do a lot of talks on how to pitch editors and what specifically and how to go after that niche market you're looking for but I would say three tips I can give you three tips right now that would help you tap into the mindset of an editor or a journalist who lives in the media space. And I'm sure a lot of you, as you know, the former, uh, you just spoke about, you've gotten lots of coverage already in, in, in the news, and that's wonderful. My three tips are this. Are you ready to give notes? <laughs> yeah. One would be get to know who you are pitching. What magazine are you looking at? Is it Success Magazine? Is it Vogue magazine? Is it, you know, whatever it is. And study the magazine. Study the magazine. It is best can to I, know. Can I mm -hmm. just say something like you're so spot on. Yeah. The very first magazine I created was called Migrant Woman magazine. Mm -hmm. So later on, I created Global Woman magazine. One year later, after having Global Woman magazine, people are still sending me emails pitching for my Red Woman magazine. Yeah. That tells that you haven't done your research, yeah? Yeah. So how do we do this? Yes, and actually that, that's, that's important because I've done a lot of pitches from people, from PR people and also entrepreneurs themselves, and they're pitching things that, you know, the current magazine, we may have changed, you know, yeah. sections in the magazine or there's no longer certain people working on the magazine. Well, get up to speed on what you're trying to pitch. I think the first thing as an editor when I get a pitch in an email or sometimes I get pitches now via social media and DMs, if they don't know, you know, the sections of the magazine that they're specifically targeting or the writer they want to specifically be interviewed by, then you're not on top of that medium. And that is so important because I go through hundreds if not thousands of pitches and, and you know, story ideas a week from all over the world. And if one or two is spot on with who they were, you know, I know this writer, I would love for them to feature me, this is my business, I would love it in this part of the magazine, this column on money, or this column on personal development. That goes to show, shows me, sorry, that you're invested in the publication, you're invested in your mission, but also aligning yourself with the mission of the brand. That is number one. Number two, and of course we could go on all day about this type yeah. of stuff, but number two would be obviously getting yourself out there and branding yourself. Having a mission, having a goal, and having a purpose for why you want to promote and share your, your story about your business, about yourself as an expert. It's really having that streamlined and creating that message. And then three, I would say, is outreach. Make it easy for the editor. <laughs> Send them everything you can. Don't have an editor or a writer come back to you and say, okay, well, send me your, your, your boilerplate. Send me your and mission statement. What does that statement. mean now? Mm -hmm. What does it mean about yeah. sending? To, to make it easy. Just make it easy. So one, outreach. Make it easy and explain who you are in your first communication. Like, don't leave people, like, don't, don't dangle the carrot for an editor. We, we don't like to play games. We don't like to play games because time is money. And journalism and media obviously is an important role in society to get messages okay, out. Okay, so let's stay here a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, because I I receive these pitches all the time. Yes, but you you have, I mean, you, you have experience with so many magazines, mm -hmm. and sometimes there are some editors say, make it easy, and the definition of easy like a short email. Mm -hmm. And somebody else said, explain everything in the email. Mm -hmm. So what is the best formula? What is mm -hmm. like, it has to be how long, how specific, how many paragraphs? So what, can you give us like a formula? Mm -hmm. What is the best to go straight to the point? For me, okay, and I can't speak on behalf of all editors. Well, yours, course, right. But yours. for me, yeah. it would be succinct messaging, a paragraph or two, no longer. I don't want a book. 
Um, if I feel like you want a book, we can talk about that later because yes. I also help with book writing and ghost writing. Um, but beyond that, one or two paragraphs max, but it has to include your mission, a little bit about yourself as well, and then also not having an expectation that you are going to, you know, um, get an answer right away. You have to be patient. I think that's the big thing. But also include um, any attachments and or references, testimonials and links. That's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Make it easy for the editors to be able to skim your email and just be able to look at it and go, you know what, this person has a story idea that I want to see. Also video, and you talk a lot about getting on video and I'm, I have to do it more myself. If you have a YouTube channel, <laughs> include your links to your, your YouTube channel. Some people who I have featured in the magazines, <coughs> They're not necessarily even public speakers, but they have something to sell. They want to sell their service, their expertise, or their or their brand or product. As long as they're on video talking about that, it could be at home, it could be a Zoom call. If I can hear what you're trying to say and what you're trying to relay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna tap into that as well. And then one more thing I'll just mention too, when you're thinking, think seasonality as well. Mm. So when I worked in the health and wellness industry. You know, January, February is a big top of mind for losing weight or getting in shape or cleaning up your diet or, or you know, hitting the gym more, whatever, whatever it is. Know that magazine editors work six months in advance of that. Mm -hmm. So I would have people pitching me like the last week of December saying, is there any way I can get in your magazine for January? I'm like, absolutely no. Maybe a year from now. <laughs> but we work five to six months in advance. Just to give you an Close example of that, right now I've, I've already planned out all the themes for the issues of Success Magazine for 2024. So that's, I always that's why it's called Success Magazine. Mm -hmm. You have to work ahead. Yeah. And I think that's the nature of being an editor and a journalist is I'm a to-do list type of person and I, I check off the boxes and then I rewrite them and I check them again. I like to work in advance. And one big reason for that is because you have to be ready to pivot. Things happen all the time in the magazine world and in, in media, as you can imagine. And sometimes, you know, if a celebrity comes in and they their story takes precedent because it's timely, because they have a book coming out, because they have a movie coming out, the nature of the magazine business is that we will get them in. So things change all the time. So also be prepared for any changes. So if somebody accepts your pitch or wants to do an article on you, just know that it could be fun. Oh, we're well. okay with that. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. As long as it's going to work. No, what I'm saying, don't worry. If uh, you really are looking for some experts, they are okay if you want to go back to them and say, That's can right. you change that? Yes, ladies? Yes. Let's do that. Yes. Now, let's talk a little bit about the book. Uh, how do you think being an expert in writing a book can help us mm -hmm. to be in the media? Mm -hmm. So when you have somebody who comes with a book, let's say, let's say you have been um, planning for the next year to do, um, let's say, a dossier mm -hmm. on women who um, are juggling as moms, mm -hmm. and then somebody brings you the book in front of you with that topic. How mama, mamas can find balance in life between children, career, and family. Is that book like a big bonus for you that it makes this woman stand out and say, I want that? Mm -hmm. It is. And again, I've been in the exact same shoes. So I went through a health issue at age 39 and I had a heart attack at age 39. So I had heart surgery. And this was at the top of my, basically my media career in Toronto. And I was doing TV a lot. I was doing, obviously, you know, an editor in chief of a, mer a magazine right then in the parenting um, sphere. And I did not realize how much stress was adding on to my body and also my emotional side. And then my physical ailments just basically, you know, they, they, they evolved and they, they came out. And so all of this to say, I wrote a book. Nice segue. And I'm going to get to the whole point about being marketable because you have a book. The most important books that I like to feature and I like to basically include in articles or to give um, is because they give leverage to the expert. They give you credibility. So it's very high likely that if you have a book or if you have a course or a program or something like that, that can leverage your expertise out in the, out in the world and give back to those readers that we're, that we're targeting, it will definitely help. Um, and even in the new year, we're starting to do more book roundups as well. I know a lot of people have books in here. So please Raise reach your hand out. If, you, if you have a yeah. book. Excellent. Yeah. 
we're starting to implement into success. It was a kind of a strategic decision for us to start highlighting more authors mm -hmm. because I find that a lot of experts nowadays have books. It's a lot easier to even self-publish books. I self-publish my own. So a lot more people are doing it, and it's a way to not only market your, your expertise, but also to give back so somebody has tips and, and tricks to keep with them. So they can keep referring back to it. And, uh, and here is the thing. First of all, uh, yeah, we thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. What you shared is amazing. And thank you for bringing mm -hmm. uh, both together the, uh, the concept of you putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. but in the same time positioning yourself as an expert. Yes. And you don't need to be a writer. I, I know you love writing. Mm -hmm. You have. You are like. Uh, this is my. This is your <laughs> big why. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. My heart, myself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, oops. Uh, what I was saying is like, it's not just about you deciding what is your why and how you get out there, how you put how you put your heart here. Mm -hmm. And many times I have seen people who spend lots of time, lots of energy, invest everything in writing a book or developing a project, and they think their job is done. Mm. They think, I've had the best book in the world, now it's you. Success Magazine, take my book. So because you come from an entrepreneurial mind, what is the next step when somebody has downloaded all that knowledge, all that expertise, that, that aha moment, that our calling that was meant to bring to the world. Uh, what is the next step? Is it, uh, is it like, have you ever uh, faced these, let's say, um, cases where, say, oh, I'm, I'm not for social media, oh, I'm not mm -hmm. for the marketing, oh, I, that's not my job. And what would be your advice for these people who bring this baby out what is the next step to bring it to the world, to, do, to increase their ability to do more marketing, to do more PR, to do more media, to get more visibility, exposure, and how can they overcome that, that fear of getting out of the comfort zone? Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, I think the biggest thing is that it has to be a win-win for everyone. So if you've written a book and you've been, maybe you've gotten some exposure in a magazine or a newspaper article or whatever, but if you're not willing to share that story on social media, share it with your network and can, can, you know, continue to brand yourself out there, then moving forward, the media or the journalist is going to go, well, you know, we included you because we know you have a large market or a network and audience, and we also want you to cross-promote us as well. So magazines think that way too. We do look at people's um, following on social media when we're going to promote them or include them in something. Not that you have to have a million people, but we do look. It's just like they say in job interviews now, right? Like yeah. people hiring people will look and Google you to see where you are, what you've done. It's the same thing for journalists. So if you don't exist in Google, yeah. you don't exist yes. at all. Yes, and we, funny enough, we have a podcast network as well at uh, Success Media, and we also have a speakers bureau. Uh, but for the podcasters, you know, if there's a podcast or somebody pitching a podcast um, uh, mission, and yet they're not on social media, we're like, mm, that doesn't make sense. I mean, it's great that you want to get up and speak and talk to people behind the scenes from the comfort of your own home. But if you're not going to put yourself out there and tag us on social media as in success and, you know, ex explain to the world why you are a collaborator with that actual network, then we're probably not going to choose you. So just keep that in mind. So when you said about like those who maybe write a book and think they're done, yeah. you're never done because I think authors are, well, they are, they're entrepreneurs and anyone who wants to get a message out there and it can be a philanthropy message too. It doesn't always have to yes. be entrepreneurship per se. It could be giving back to the community. As long as you keep turning the wheels, like we're like constant creators, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter what age you are either. You can start young, right up until 90 years old, as long as you keep pushing out that message. So there is no stopping. It's just really adding on and evolving. And I love to think of the word evolving our brand as well. And again, I can go on for hours about all this wow. stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'm reading your book, uh, My Heart, Myself, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it, I just got this powerful message here. As women, we put a lot of unnecessary pressure on ourselves to please others. Mm -hmm. Whether you are a mom, career person, wife, girlfriend, boss, colleague, or all the above, well, maybe not a wife and girlfriend, but who knows? <laughs> others, no doubt, we are expected to get everything down everything done without complaining. Mm -hmm. 
so that is that is powerful because it's so true because as as women uh, we put ourselves at the bottom mm -hmm. when everybody is happy then we come back to ourselves and now for the very first time we're coming together to bring that love to ourselves self love it's the fuel mm -hmm. that self love is not because you're selfless is because you are in fact showing the opposite and where do we put the oxygen you put it to yourself so you experienced it you went through it and you lived it but do you think that there are so many women out there they still feel guilt feel ashamed or feel like close your mouth hide yourself don't say anything and we all have been there so what would be your message for someone who is still in that, that little fear? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I'm not happy, I'm in pain, maybe suffering, but still it's not, doesn't have the power to complain. Not mm -hmm. to complain, I mean, I don't, maybe it's not the complain per se, but to have a voice, to get the mic and say, hey, I exist. Mm -hmm. So what did, you, what did you exactly mean when, when you wrote this book? And this message. Yeah. So I find that a lot of people's books nowadays are based on experience, and I think that's the real that's the real like uh, enjoyment out of them because you can resonate with so many. So back to when I was living in Toronto, and again, making a long story short, um, when I had my heart health issues, I was at the top of my game in the media world in Canada, a national journalist. And I didn't realize the pressures I was putting on myself to, again, as I wrote there, to be a mom, to be a wife, to be a friend, to be a leader, to be a journalist, and be in the public eye where you have to look good and, 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 and your message has to be, you know, spot on. And it all caught up with me physically and it, it really walked, rocked my world. So when I, I wrote this book, not only out of a necessity I felt for other women to read and to be able to resonate with the fact that I, you know, we cannot do it all. I know there's there's a lot of books out there that say women can do it all, and I do believe that. And what exactly but, mean? But I mean in increments because maybe that doing it all is over a lifetime, mm -hmm. where right where you have you know you have the kids. There's certain things you do. You don't have the kids move on. Then there's certain things you can move on to. But I was of the mindset growing up, and I go into this in my book that I had to do it all once and putting pressure and that, on yourself. Yes, and that's exactly this book literally is that whole message about why we have to take time for ourselves, make ourselves a priority, and obviously self-care and self-love, because even though I thought I was doing those things all my whole career, I wasn't, until I literally had a wake-up call that rocked my world, it was physical, and I had to take a step back. And so to, to your point, this book is literally, it was very therapeutic for me to write this book. I don't know how many of you have written your books, because it's... It's not the book that you read, it's the book it. that you write that yes. heals you. Yes, exactly. And so this book I self-published. As an editor, I couldn't hand it over to another editor to change my words when it was so close to my heart. Um, maybe the next one. But <laughs> this one, it was just so close to my heart that I had to self-publish, get up on Amazon, and I didn't, I couldn't believe the actual, you know, the uh, feedback I was getting from women from around the world who, not necessarily having a heart issue, but having a heart issue. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In their own lives. Yeah, and that's exactly why I wrote this book. So this is a reflection of what I went through. There's lots of tips and everything of what I had to do to come to that realization that I was trying to do it all. And just to backtrack to what you said in your question about, you know, you look after yourself when everyone else is tended to and looked after. Well, I was finding that nobody, my family and friends were never, never satisfied. So I was no never, matter what, yeah. Right. They were never never to that point where I could change the and you know turn to myself. So that's that's the issue. I mean we never have the right time as women and as moms um, to be able to look at ourselves. So this is a whole teaching moment for me. It has helped people along the way. It's a couple now, years old now, but I, I still have people writing to me every day. Now here's something very, very powerful, which now it's 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 a message that I want every woman to hear in this room. This book might just save your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, just think about this quote when you are going out there and just sharing your story, just being you, just being present, just living the moment. 
you do not know that one sentence, one word that you say can save somebody's life. And thank you for putting this here. Yes. yes. And that quote, funny enough, is from a journalist from the Chicago Sun-Times. I had it, you know, obviously I had journalists in my peer group uh, review it before it went to press. So that's a legitimate quote. Um, but yes, I think that my book actually has touched a piece of every woman, pretty much every woman in some way. Um, again, the heart health part of it is my own story, but people can resonate with that. And then out of that, you talked about sharing stories. Um, there was a, a, a time after I published this that I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write another book. I mean, I'm a writer. That's what I love to do. And I, I, I have many in the works. But what I wanted to do was I was talking to my own peer group and I was talking to my own friends, like my regular girlfriends I grew up with, my high school buddies. And they were like, but Carrie, I have a great story to share but I will never write a book. And I don't want to start a blog or a website. These are homemakers. These are women that, you know, yeah. regular jobs, if you will, right? And I'm like, you know what? Instead of writing my, my next book, this was two years ago now, mm -hmm. I'm going to start a women's storytelling platform. Mm -hmm. So I do have a website called redlilylife.com mm -hmm. and I can share it with everyone. And I have now, and that's where I actually publish other women's stories. So contributors to that, platform, share their stories, and they're very heartfelt and deep, and I, I share them all, no judgment. Actually, yeah. if you read my founder's message on there, that's what it says, no judgment on there. Because it's um, coming from the traditional journalism world, mm -hmm. where I was taught, you know, objectivity and subject, and, and you know, there's um, church and state, and then seeing where media is going today, and I think there's a whole other workshop on that, I feel like I'm a traditionally trained journalist but I'm a heartfelt storyteller and that's where my empathy and, and that female feminine side as the young lady spoke about before has come into play and so this particular platform is my baby well, so yeah. I, I work here like you know what I mean this is my profession and I love this and I love sharing the professional and success stories and they supplement each other love it but my passion project is Red Lily and they do supplement, and we had a great chat, chat last night about how my two worlds, and I'm sure you guys all have worlds, come in together and can combine to really make um, a positive message moving forward for women. And I try to contribute to the community in that way. Perry, thank you so much. Woo! We can listen to you all day long. You are absolutely an amazing speaker. And I think, I think now you're going to get stuck with Global Women. <laughs> That's it. Because we want your voice, we want your expertise, yeah. your talent, everything you yes. have done, you have preparing yourself for us. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Thank for you so much. You